I think we're all set, Therese. All right. Are you recording? Yep. All right. Thanks, everybody. Thanks for joining. Sorry for uh, the late start. Um, um, as you can see, we have an agenda for today. Sorry, I just got a message from Angie. She's on her way and she'll be here shortly. Okay. In the next minute or two. Um, so we're going to do the, the typical operational update provided uh, by Holly. I'm going to limit it to, to 10 minutes. Uh, then we're going to do a quick uh, discussion from, from the board committee updates. Then an update on Drupal 8 Accelerates, also presented by Holly. And then an update on the strategic frame, also presented by Holly. Hi. <laughs> um, it's so the Holly show. With that, I'll give the floor to Holly. <clears throat> All right. I'll talk for the rest of the hour, everyone. How's that sound? <laughs> um, <laughs> okay. So uh, just for, notes from the operational um, update, and I'll just run through the sort of the highlights of things we're watching and the, and the lowlights uh, from the month of June. Um, so a couple of big highlights for us. Uh, one in particular is that we were able to launch uh, Drupal CI. Um, initially, it was just launched uh, on for, for core core testing. Uh, we just, this like moments ago though, uh, we were able to launch it for Contrib, which is great. Um, and it's still running concurrently with our old system, uh, but uh, so far it's been working pretty well. And, uh, you know, it was a precondition for Drupal 8 uh, release because uh, the CI improvements mean that we're able to test against uh, more versions of PHP and different kinds of data in different kinds of environments. Uh, which is a nice uh, upgrade for sure, but the best part is that patches are going to get tested a lot faster. These Drupal I is set up to auto scale. So uh, with our old test bot system, uh, if uh, you know we had a finite number of servers running at any given moment, and uh, if a camp started to uh, you know started to sprint in Eastern Europe at 3 a.m. Pacific time. Uh, and the serve the the sprint bots or sprint bots the test bots started to get backed up. Um, you know it was often hard to get someone to turn on more machines to to create more capacity. So Drupal CI auto scales. We get that elasticity of the cloud. Um, and the second that uh, you know capacity for the existing servers is reached, uh, more servers are spun up. Um, so. Although the test times for a particular patch aren't necessarily faster with Drupal CI, the patches themselves are getting out of the queue much more quickly. So that should save our Drupal developers a lot of heartache in the future. Super excited about that. Um, and then just a, a couple of other things that I think really are indicative of you know, how um, excited the the world is to see Drupal 8 get out there. I know it's been a slog and it can feel kind of, um, you know, lots of folks in the community are, there's some angst around getting Drupal 8 out the door, but I think when it does come out, we're really excited about how people are feeling about it. Uh, we've had uh, some white papers that we've done in the last uh, month or so with the uh, last couple of months around Drupal 8 and uh, year to date, we've had over 30, 33,000 downloads or views of those Drupal 8 related content pieces. So we're excited about the momentum there and, and what that's going to mean when we're able to get a, you know, get a candidate or get Drupal 8 released. Um, and the association also has uh, really been growing its ability to reach members of the Drupal community. So we've had a ton of, um, you know, about a quarter of a million touch points with the community this year through social media, newsletters, people coming to Drupal cons, webinars, um, you know, all the ways, uh, camps that are sponsored, right? Like all the ways that we are getting Drupal messaging out there or providing a service to the community. Um, so we're really excited about that number, just that, that sort of raw number is really big and exciting for us. And we'll talk about the strategic frame later, but um, it'll be even better when we're able to put some context to those touch points and show that we're really actually helping the community to achieve something. So there's some highlights there uh, I wanted to point out. Um, the thing that we're watching right now is Barcelona net income. Um, we had solid early bird registration numbers, which was a big relief. Um, but the registration has definitely been soft in this regular registration period so far. Um, and sponsorship has been down this year um, from plan. So 
you know, Rachel does a really fantastic job of managing the budget and managing to the budget so that we can, um, you know, we can meet our, our net goals, but that's definitely going to be a challenge uh, this time around for Barcelona. Uh, but that shouldn't be super surprising news, um, but, it, you know, it is what it is. Um, and then, of course, uh, the, the low light for the month of June, uh, we put a blog post out in the community and the board was obviously informed, but we went through a retrenchment process in June or we, we started that in June. And um, we have, you know, we've shared that with staff. Um, all of the uh, immediate adjustments have been made and we're putting our plans in place to monitor where we're at. And we'll share some of that, uh, some of the financial bits of that uh, with you when we get into executive session. So those are the big talking points. Any questions about any of those items? Holly, how has the response from the community been publicly? The, I mean, if you could summarize, you know, sort of general, general reaction, it was pretty light, right? And did you get a lot? Uh, no, I definitely did not get a, a ton of feedback from folks. Although when I have one-on-one -on -one conversations with folks going forward, it definitely comes up. We talk about it with people. Um, but uh, I think the things that I've heard publicly is just they're they're grateful that we shared so openly, mm -hmm. um, which is that feels good, um, you know. And I think a lot from the business community, um, I had a, a lot of business owners reach out actually and say like, you know, you guys did what you had to do, right? So. Although, you know, I definitely suspect there's some unspoken concern. Uh, but, uh, you know, we just try to keep uh, keep reassuring folks that uh, it, was a, it was a tough thing to go through. Um, and it feels and sounds terrible. But overall, the picture is still really good. Uh, for the You know, the association is still growing. Thank you. For any, other, any other questions? Do you have any other updates, uh, Holly? I don't think so. Am I missing something you think I should be saying? <laughs> no, no, no. Just wondering if we okay. can move on to the next section or not. <laughs> I believe we can. All right. Awesome. So committee updates are next. Um, they are in the uh, board package. Um, they're still being filled out. Uh, it looks like... <laughs> Uh, neither the finance, or sorry, I, I, I can say uh, they're still typing. Maybe what we should do is go over them real quick. Yeah, um, I, I think. Really make sure we, we capture them. I don't know. Let's uh, let's let folks have a minute in there. I know governance put their notes in, and they do uh, they do have an uh, an item they want to raise for discussion. If that's okay, yeah, could we could we go last? No, it's a. Oh, there's nothing else to review really right now. Okay, so we'll go first. Um, <laughs> so uh, government governance uh, uh, met, um, and basically we were meeting around uh, around board session for the next term. Um, the 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 short the oh, short bit is that Donna and Samir both have expressed <laughs> a desire to stay on the board for another cycle. Um, you know that that'll be brought into into the discussions as we talk about who gets appointed and so forth. Angie's ex expressed a, a desire to take a break, um, which I think uh, um, isn't a surprise to, to folks. Um, um, and uh, and so I think that uh, you know well that also needs to be factor in, factored into into our into our discussions. Um, I think the biggest thing that we want to uh, talk about is what appears to be a little bit of a change in process and how how we how we navigate that. And that is that it uh, it looks like the government's committee is uh, is is doing some of the stuff that uh, the uh, that the uh, um, nominating committee has done in the past, which is totally fine and appropriate and good. Um, but I think it would make sense for us to talk about how. Uh, nominating committee and government committee ought to work uh, work together um, moving forward over the next uh, three four months until we've got uh, a full slate um, uh, identified selected and voted on. Yeah. So discuss. <laughs> Do you guys have a proposal on, on how you want to work together or? Um, I 
Well, Samir is is, is is sort of sort of um, uh, straddles both both committees, and it's so it seems like there's probably some some uh, some good overlap there that'll help us. I think the biggest challenge is that the, in the past, um, and maybe I'm wrong about this, uh, but it seems like in the past a lot of the discussions around individuals have been private to the nominating committee. Um, and given the fact that Samir is also up for um, reappointment this uh, this uh, this coming this coming um, cycle, um, and he's on the nominating committee, um, prob we probably need to figure out exactly exactly how that's gonna how that's gonna play out. We do have a few ideas about some names, and um, we're going we're we're more than happy to share those, but. Uh, I think part of part of uh, part of uh, this discussion is uh, is figuring out a who's on the who, who really is on the nominating committee any longer because it seems like Denise maybe isn't any uh, any longer based on the uh, committee's board packet uh, listing. Um, so we've got Samir, Kristoff, and George, um, and that means that on the nominating committee we only have one board member, and that board member is up for a renomination. Right. I mean, so uh, Samir went on the, uh, or Denise came off the nominating committee when she was up for um, her seat. So I would suggest that probably Samir comes off for this cycle and then can go back on if if he wants. Um, so uh, have you had a conversation with Denise about whether she'd like to to take on the nominating committee? So typically, we've had people who were um, outside of the community or off the board beyond the nominating committee because the board we obviously get to vote on the slate um, right. individually so um, and or uh, the community elected members so um, Addie um, you know previously Donna was on it um, so I would suggest Denise um, and or Addie and or you would be good members of the nominating committee but I don't think that you know I think that any num any suggestion you have come as like a board member to them rather than from the governance committee to the nominating committee. If that makes sense. That totally makes sense. Um, yeah, I haven't had a chance to talk to Denise. She wasn't able to make it to our uh, our um, governance meeting, but I'll 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 reach out to her one on one and uh, and see what her feelings are on that. My guess is that she'd be very interested in taking part in that, given our conversation um, at DrupalCon. And for the record, I'm totally game to be on the nomination committee as well. I, I mean, at the at the very least, I think we're going to need, you know, a, a several people in terms of being able to talk to people and sort of doing the interviews and managing all that stuff. Um, yeah. So I'm I'm more than willing to to help out whether or not Denise uh, steps into that. Yeah, this is Samir. Um, one of the thing, so a couple of things that have um, that came up. One is um, you know the workflow that goes from the governance committee to the nominations committee uh, is relatively new um, because in the past that's not what we did. And then the second is uh, that if I recuse myself from the process, which I will, um, the nominations committee gets thin. And in the past, um, just sort of the logistics of managing interviews and talking to people and all of that stuff is difficult. Uh, with people living in different time zones, and then if you have a thin committee with you know like two or three people, it becomes even harder to do this. So I don't know if there should be a combined effort or it should be you know a coordinated effort between governance and nomination. But that's something that came up in our in our conversations. I guess I don't understand why there would be. Can you clarify why why there needs to be coordination? Because governance, as I understand it, just is, is dealing with you know how we function as an organization, and nominating has has typically been responsible for open board seats and and filling that pipeline. So part of the overlap was where governance could indicate what are <coughs> the things that are missing on the board, or what what is it that we need to move forward and, and sustain momentum, the skill sets and backgrounds and so on. Um, it's something that would just happen at the board discussion and then nomination could take it on from there. Uh, that's one of the reasons we were thinking that we become component. Tiffany, if you heard that, can you re-summarize? We couldn't hear that very well. I was going to 
I was going to ask the same. It's very hard to hear you, Samir. Not sure if you're far away from the mic or not. But... Uh, so, can you hear me now? Oh yeah, much better. Uh, okay, sorry. So yeah, what I was saying was, um, so in the past, we've not had a workflow of governance to nominations. Um, and one of the issues is that governance can provide feedback on the kinds of people we need on the board, the skill sets, their backgrounds, and you know the strengths they bring to the table to sustain the process uh, of what the board is doing. And so that was one of the reasons why we thought there would be an overlap between governance and nomination. Mm -hmm. Does that make sense? And that was actually something that we were specifically asked, we were asked to do. Um, and uh, you know, Holly, Holly requested that we uh, that we spend some time uh, thinking about that. I reached out to Dries, got some feedback from Dries, um, and uh, and uh, we've uh, we've form it, formed a uh, uh, a rough document at this point that um, that uh, um, has 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 some of that uh, that thinking into it, and also has uh, has some suggestions, some thinking around some people that might. Uh, could could possibly be be considered, uh, although nobody on the governance committee has uh, has reached out to, to any of these individuals at this point. Plus, there is a document that uh, that Holly started, um, I think, in 2013 or 2014, where we uh, where we indicated our strengths and uh, and so forth, and it had the board terms, and it also had a tab for uh, for. Uh, um, suggested suggested uh, um, uh, potential board members in the future. Um, so all of this is sort of coming together um, in in a way that I think is good. Um, but I think that it makes sense for us to formalize some way to 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 engage in in a handoff from from uh, of, of of this work from governance to nominating that is. Uh, as seamless as possible, um, and it would be somewhat good to have uh, some overlap. And I think that if with Addie, Addie uh, throwing her hat in in the ring, or and or Denise um, being involved in in those conversations, uh, that that'll work fine. Um, and then they then then I, my feeling is that they should run with that with that ball um, and uh, and get us to a place where where we've got a slate to vote on. Does that all make sense? That, that does make sense. Um, you know, I, I guess we need to, as you said, I think we need to get the right people on the nominating committee so that that committee is, um, you know, work, working well. Right. And it, it sounds like we have a couple of candidates. So um, I don't know how urgent this is. If we maybe the next board meeting, we vote for these people to join the nominating committee. I think that's fine. My understanding is that it's taken two months um, in the past to go through conversations um, uh, with with uh, with potential candidates uh, for 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 the board, um, and uh, and getting it to a place where where we're ready to vote on a slate. And we've got a roughly four months right now, a four month window. So it's probably okay uh, if we if we if we uh, vote on that in the uh, uh, vote on the committee in the next in the next board meeting. Right. Well, it, it sounds like Eddie is a candidate, and she just expressed that she would be happy to to help. But Denise, we need to talk to. She's not on the call, right? So. And I can reach out to Denise. That's not a problem. Right. If if it's more urgent, we can always do an, a vote over email. Um, Okay. Well, I think I think we've got um, a direction here, and uh, and I can run with the ball. Go ahead. Just for the record, um, I'm putting in his um, apologies because we're we're at Oscon, and she's actually scheduled to speak in half an hour. Oh, okay. Yeah. All right. Um, okay, and then I guess as a, as another question, um, you know. Is Sam Samir, are you the, the chair of the nomination committee? Or do we need to identify a chair as well? Yeah. Uh, he is currently the chair, so but since he's up for nomination, I don't right. think he can be. So we'll need to replace him as chair, at least in right. terms. So, right, so I'm going to recuse myself. Right, so in addition to 
So I guess in addition to bringing on new people, we also need to identify who wants to be the new chair. Right. Is that is that part of the thinking? Yes. Okay. Yep, sounds like it. Awesome. All right. Um, I think I've got enough to 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 go on uh, to finish finish this work up. Um, so unless there's any other comments or questions. I have one comment, and it, I really like, it's resonating really well for me that our community elected, um, that our community elected positions are involved in the nominating process. That kind of, that just has a bell for me that I, I quite like. I just wanted to say that. So thanks, Addy, for stepping up, and Matthew, thanks for all the work that you've been doing in this space. Mm, you're welcome. The, the only thing I'll add um, maybe is um, I know you guys emailed me asking for some, some ideas of what, what I think would be um, good DNA, I guess, for lack of a better word, to add to the board, and I gave my feedback. Yep. In doing so, I tried to represent um, others, including Holly, uh, based on conversations that I've had with, with some of you. Um, but I would definitely encourage um, the team to reach out directly to other people as well. Like, I, I definitely don't want, want to be the only person giving giving feedback and input. So. Definitely. <clears throat> Thanks, Trees. Okay. Are there any other questions about that, or any other um, things we would like to discuss from any of the committees? All right. It doesn't look or sound like it, so I think we can um, move on to the next topic, which is the uh, Drupal 8 Accelerate topic. Okay. Thank you. I am. Um... I don't have any slides for this because it's pretty um, pretty straightforward, but I just want to make sure that we um, are on the same page. So to date, the D8 Accelerate campaign has raised about $222,000 of its $250,000 goal. So we're definitely in the home stretch. We're looking at the last 10% of the campaign. That's come from over 400 donations um, of all sizes, which is pretty exciting. Um, and just recently in the last week, uh, the Indian community has been rallying around the campaign. They've donated about $2,500 from shops in India in the last uh, last week or so, which is pretty cool. Um, and they're definitely the first um, first sort of country I've seen, like, you know, come together like that um, and, and do an organized effort. So that's that's been great. Um, Somewhat more importantly, we've spent $127,000 of that money so far uh, on 43 grants, and I think you know some really significant work has gotten done uh, because of that. Um, I lost track trying to count up the number of issues that have actually been addressed, but suffice it to say that it's a lot, <laughs> um, um, and really good good work that's been getting done. Um, so the the plan from here on out is to um, you know, let the let the committee continue to, to to make grants. We're still open for community grants as well. And if we get to a release uh, before we have spent all the funds, um, you know, we will talk with the core maintainers at that point to 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 talk about what's going to be significant for the release uh, after that, so that we can spend down the funds, but you know, in a in the right way. So, looking forward to crossing that bridge when we get there. Um, but that's where we're at. So with the last bit of timing to go, uh, or the last bit of fundraising to go, uh, if we are, I know folks have still been working on some larger donations from corporate entities that you are engaged with. Um, it'd be awesome to have those lined up within the next couple of weeks. So we have a sense of how close we will be to the finish line by the time we get to Barcelona. Um, if we are approaching Barcelona and we still have still need funds to round out the campaign, um, you know we'll be doing some work at Barcelona and on, on Drupal.org, et cetera, um, uh, around the Barcelona timeframe to try to finish out the fund. 
So that's the plan right now. Holly, I would love to Holly. see us push and just make that our deadline, and so and so we could plan a huge like announcement there. It'd be really cool. Mm -hmm. um, I think we can do it with 25k um, left. I mean, I think we can do it, but. I don't know. Like, I don't want to be in Barcelona trying to raise money. Still, it seems seems anticlimactic. I have, I have some yep. thoughts, some opinions on this, Holly. That um, we can probably dig into a little bit this afternoon when we, when we meet. But one idea in the crowdfunding level is perhaps we could do a relaunch for to, for the finish. And one of the things that we've lacked is a really um, solid end date, goal date, and I think that um, a little bit of a relaunch campaign around, you know, this is this is the, the deadline for doing this um, is something we should think about. I mean, we did set that as our deadline, and mm -hmm. and and I think but we've done... Mm -hmm. uh, we said by September. It is. And it's I, on the site. Yeah. And okay. so, I, I mean... I don't know. Like, I, I guess to me that always meant before Barcelona, not, you know, but, you know, I, I mean, we can't control what we can't control. I think we've all pushed pretty hard and we've done a really good job. I just I just really wanted to be able to announce at Barcelona that we had achieved this goal. I think it would give a much needed sense of sort of just accomplishment to this effort. Yeah. So... This is Angie. Um, a couple things about that. Uh, one is that we might legitimately run into a problem where this would be a great problem to have, but let's just say we could run, run into a problem where Drupal 8 gets to zero release blockers um, yeah. before we before run out of money because we've got about 100k left and we, we could possibly be as low as 9 this week. Right. So, a nine release blockers. So, one thing that might help with the last bit of a push is if the board had a plan for how we want to spend any overage money. So, for example, I could very easily see us transitioning funds that we don't spend in the run up to getting Drupal 8 launched, but to instead repurposing the grant to now be about key contributed modules or something like that, you know. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, and if and it was, if we had a, if we had a really solid, like, if we raise too much money, then we're going to spend it porting, making sure media and panels and blah, blah, blah are ported. Mm -hmm. Then I think we not only um, save face in the event that the committee can't spend money fast enough to, to make a difference, but we also provide a really strong incentive for continuing to give. Because a lot of people might just look at that and see like, well, if you got $100,000 left, why do you, in nine issues, why do you need me to pay you anything? You right. Know? Yeah. So. Um, um, but the, the I, I would agree, that but that I think we... Really Oh, sorry. Is, Go ahead, Donna. Sorry. The, the flip yep. side that I think is really positive to this, Angie, is that um, our original goal was $125,000, right? We, we kind of did it a stretch to say, let's make it a quarter of a mil. And you guys have spent um, 127. So, so that was kind of right. And I think that can be part of the story that's part of a relaunch to get to the end. And having what we're going to spend the rest of the money on as part of that would work really well. Sorry, Jeff. No, that's okay. Um, I, I I'm going back to look at you know certainly in the original documents you drafted. I don't I don't I, I'm not actually positive if we did say this, but we were prepared for that contingency, Angie, and that we said we were supposed to say at least. And I think we did. I'm just trying to find the place where we said it publicly. I think we were we were going to say you know essentially yeah if we go through this money we are going to keep rolling in terms of sm squashing bugs. Now mm -hmm. that might not all be criticals per se, but you know, rest assured, there'll be plenty of bug squashing and post, uh, you know, post launch issue or post release issues that we could use this money for. Um, but we didn't. I don't recall explicitly saying that we would then dip into contrib per se. But I mean, it seems like a pretty easy modification of the original policy to do that. We never said we'd refund money. Let's put it that way. <laughs> yeah. There's, there's a number of right, things yeah. we could do. Like we could save the money for future criticals because there's only maybe nine left, but there's going to be many dozens of criticals, including security bugs that will be identified over the next year, right? Um, we can also focus on majors. Yep. Right. There's major bugs which are going to be they're not release blocking, but they're still some of them are still painful, so to speak. Uh, we can uh, we can 
look at those, or we, per Angie's suggestion, we can look at contributed modules. Um, so there is um, a, a number of different options, and you know we can do a combination of those options or any of these. So I, I think we should uh, figure out who's going to be the right team that, that comes back with a proposal, I think. Plus plus, Trace. So, on the who from the, is, is that something Holly you would like to own? Uh, yeah, I'd love to. Just, yeah, I'd love to talk to you guys and just sort of figure out how you want to how you want to frame it. Um, and you know, it's tough to put solid plans in place to your questions and concerns, Donna and Jeff, right now because we just don't know where we're going to be. So right. we're just trying to be flexible and know that we're gonna we're gonna try to own that space, but we're not quite sure what the message is at this point, right? Yeah, I think I think I think that's that. Yeah, another way to look at at, at Angie's point is just, you know, if we want to raise the last twenty five thousand, we ought to do it fast anyway. I mean, <laughs> regardless, yeah. because I, I, I would just take it as a challenge to go ahead and get it done, and then and then that's not even an issue because I would agree. Like, I think if we're you know we're sitting at two hundred thirty thousand dollars, and the and then we we announce that we've reached uh you know and our release candidate then. Yeah, people are like, eh. Yeah. You know, why should I be the guy? Why should I be the guy that throws the last dollar in the pile? You know what I mean? Um, so it does start to eat away at our um, incentive. So I think, you know, doing a final push before Barcelona, both for morale purposes, for practical purposes of actually getting the money before it, you know, there's disincentive to have it, um, and also just, you know, not having to even spend our time worried about what we would do if we get, if we raised it all. After you know, if we if we didn't need it anymore, it'd be just great if we just knock it out. But easier said than done. I don't, I don't know. Yeah, I'm gonna say that without um, some additional uh, you know higher dollar donations from uh, you know some from from some of the more board driven donations, you know I I don't think we're gonna get all the way to that last twenty seven thousand dollars. Um, but it also sounds like, you know, we're going to get to a place where we have a release candidate. Um, and you know, I, I also feel like it's fine to declare victory somewhat shy of $250,000. We got to the release candidate with that money. Right. So, but uh, let me, let me, uh, I'll, I will try to set up some time to chat more with like maybe Angie, you and catch. about what direction we want to go to, we want to go forward with. Can you guys still hear me? Got weirdly silent. I'm gonna say no. Probably move on to the next move topic. Move on, yeah. Yeah, okay. Yeah, um, just trying to keep us on, on track here. I don't know if she's back. Yeah, no, that's fine. I just want to make sure someone could hear me. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, there's Holly. Yeah. Yay. Holly. <laughs> oh. Holly's talking to somebody else. That was weird. Hey. The mic, the mic totally dropped out. I heard Dre start talking, and I thought it was because he heard me, but he didn't. <laughs> no, no, I was, I was just saying that we lost you, and then when you come back, we should move on to the next topic to, yeah. to, to keep ourselves on track here because we're, uh, we're running a little bit behind. Sounds good. Partly and because we started late, so. Yeah. Sounds good, and I'll uh, I'll reach out to Angie um, and probably catch to to try to have that conversation about the direction. Hopefully, right. okay. Uh, sounds good. Let's move on to the uh, strategic frame then. Yep. So uh, I just want to give you guys an an update. Uh, we have been working on this internally. Um, the association had a number of goals that they've been that we've been working under for the last few years, and we've been working on refining that. Um, we started in January with the board retreat, uh, and have been uh, working um, with the staff over the last uh, bit of time to update this. Um, and for some staff, this will be um, the first view of it arranged like this. Uh, but we'll be talking about it in great detail, great detail at our staff meeting, our all hands staff meeting next week. So. Um, just to remind folks, our strategic frame starts with our vision and mission, and hopefully got those those have not changed. 
Um, and part of what's driving us uh, overall is an overall org strategy here of building our authority as the, as the voice of Drupal in the community. Um, so, uh, you know, we are, we want to do that in a very collaborative way, obviously. It's our voice all together, uh, but we're still working on really where is the association's role in a lot of places and figuring out what that authority is, not authority over people, but authority with people. That's going to be really key to any of our success um, in the future. So, as we have been, um, as we've been thinking about what is it overall that the organization is trying to do, you know, our, our real strategy is figuring out, um, is trying to do everything in a way that helps us, uh, helps cement our role in in the community. Um, we have a number of tools that we can use in deploying our strategy um, that give us sort of an unfair advantage over other players in the space. One of those really important ones is the fame wand. We can draw attention to people because we have lots of channels to do that and really celebrate the community. Um, we have Drupal.org, and that's something that we help manage with the community. Um, and because of that position, it's something that we can use to highlight things, um, highlight various initiatives, uh, et cetera, that need attention. Um, uh, the trademark, while still owned by Dries, is something that you know we get to use in a privileged way. Um, so that's that's something that's uh, useful for us as an organization. And the fact that we are vendor agnostic gives us a position in the community that allows us to do some things that are unique and useful uh, for the project as well. So these are things that we think about in executing um, in executing our strategic frame. And I think we do have a couple of constraints in terms of what we're able to say that we're going to achieve uh, over the next 12 to 18 months. Um, so I just want to put those on the table. Obviously, we don't have cash reserves right now to invest in new programs or services. So anything that we do has to be able to pay for itself really immediately. Um, and it's also clear to us that our the structure, the way that we're organized, the work that you know really has been designed to support the work that we do. Um, and so if we decide that we're going to do radically different work, it's just going to, it would take time to shift that, right? So I just I want to be clear that we, um, you know, we were an organization that worked on DrupalCons and then an, and then an organization that does DrupalCons and supports Drupal.org. And if we make changes that are, you know, affect that, it takes time to execute. So... With that in mind, what's in our strategic frame, just to remind you, um, the strategic frame is about getting where we want to go, but how do we achieve our mission? Um, or how to get to Cleveland. <laughs> I'm going to go fast over this because you guys have seen this a lot. Um, the board part of this is really focused on the mission and the goals, um, and the staff are really focused on the tactics and the objectives, and we overlap in a strategy area. We talk about that a lot together. You guys helped us identify in January uh, our three to five year goals. So developing sufficient professionals, leading the community in the development of Drupal, ensuring the sustainability of the project and the community, and increasing Drupal adoption, um, along with increasing the strength and resiliency of the association itself. So what has ended up being in our plan? So developing sufficient professionals to meet global demand for Drupal. We have a, a Recognizing our constraints, uh, again, there were lots of things we could do, um, but what we have on the docket right now is a single strategy of educating and training individuals, uh, and we have two objectives for the next uh, 12 to 18 months. The first is around uh, defining an engagement plan, uh, specifically for Drupal.org, to map what it means to go from learner to skilled, so creating, uh, creating those skilled developers. Um, and then we will be focusing on DrupalCons and other programs that can help create actual training opportunities for individuals. And our first objective here is just to understand like how many training opportunities we can create. Um, and we'll get into uh, sort of the qualitative nature. What is the, you know, are we actually moving people from one, one you know, from learner to skilled um, and subsequently. So again, that's for the short term, uh, that 12 to 18 month period, um, as we're able to add resources uh, to the to this objective, our future strategies will be building and directing the network, uh, partnering with tech training programs, uh, so things like, um, oh, I forgot here in Portland what they're called already, 
uh, but uh, training programs who are creating Drupal developers, universities, right, and then um, recruiting people into the Drupal network directly. Those are all strategies that we could entertain at some point in the future. Once we move on from those two objectives and we're able to get them out the door, uh, we will uh, add that strategy of building and directing the network um, and then work on getting, uh, working with the um, training opportunities that already exist in the ecosystem, um, helping to make them more visible and get people engaged in, in those. Um, and that will let us, um, sorry, everything went ahead. That will let us then um, get to a place where we can start to measure that qualitative output. How many skilled developers are we actually creating? Uh, our second goal is leading the community in focused, efficient, effective development of Drupal. We have three strategies we're using right now. Establish model and maintain positive community values. Partner with product teams to coordinate and communicate the priorities and incentivize development. Uh, the first one should be pretty self-explanatory. That's We're going to do our work in a way that reflects community values, uh, the positive community values we have out there. Um, the second, partner with product team to coordinate and communicate priorities. The product team here is the Drupal product team, so probably the core maintainers is what we're talking about. Um, and I want to emphasize that this is something kind of new. Um, the association hasn't had a clear and real relationship with the um, core maintainers in the past, nothing formal. Um, but uh, if we are going to help uh, lead the you know, efficient and effective development of Drupal, we have to know what it is that is coming up, what's going to be important to to Drupal development. Um, and that's going to allow us to understand what it is that we should be highlighting and directing the network to go do. So uh, that's that's a really important strategy, I think, uh, for this goal and some and some others. Um, and then incentivizing development itself, like how do we use Drupal.org and the other fame wand, you know, our other assets to help um, uh, create a reason for people to, to get engaged in the development of Drupal. So, our first step is going to figure out what it is we want from orgs to, you know, what we want those orgs to do. And that does require conversation with those core maintainers at, you know, various points of the release cycle. What it is, what is it that we need uh, companies to provide? Um, you know, do we need them to give us a developer for a day a week or a developer full time for three months? Or is it, you know, uh, is there, are there specific contrib pieces that have to be focused on? Those are the kinds of questions that we need to understand. Um, for the various stages of product release uh, cycles, product development cycles. Um, and then once we know what that is, um, we can create the list of incentives to implement. In the future, we'd like to have a strategy added in there around market research um, so that we can actually talk to Drupal customers and understand the, um, the demand and opportunities uh, for Drupal. Um, that will be useful to share with the folks who are actually working on the product and making sure that, you know, they're developing things that people actually want. <laughs> um, and once we complete that um, initial set of objectives, um, we will also be working on uh, getting the Drupal.org roadmap initiatives um, project managed through the new initiative framework as part of the content um, strategy that gets implemented on Drupal.org. Uh, and we'll be looking to, um, we'll be looking at the issues for core, uh, understanding how long on average it takes to close an issue in core, um, and working with the community to find ways that help us resolve issues faster. Because I think um, one thing we hear again and again is that most of the time people don't, at a certain point people don't care if the answer is yes, let's do it, or no, let's not. It's the part where you put an issue out there and it sits forever and ever and ever, uh, and no decision is made. That's the part that's painful, right? So let's be looking to resolve issues. Uh, on ensuring the, the sustainability of the Drupal projects, uh, we are looking to provide capacity support. Um, board at one point this said capacity and funding support, uh, but we're not sure that's the right strategy going forward. We need to have more conversations about that, but we definitely want to provide capacity so uh, support. Organizing that capacity of the community to align with project priorities, um, this again is, uh, this is tied to working with those core maintainers and understanding what's really important for the project right now. Um, and then incentivizing development is also a key strategy here. So um, this is a little less intense. We don't have to quite understand what the entire like product development cycle looks like and what's needed when. 
But we do want to open up that relationship with core maintainers and understand in the next three months, these are the kinds of skill sets that are going to be really important because we're going to be addressing these kinds of issues. And how do we use um, Drupal.org, the newsletters, um, you know, social media, et cetera, to really highlight what that is and drive people to those very specific focused things. Um, uh, and those can be core things, but those can also be contrib or other areas of the site, right? Um, and then get those things up and highlighted on Drupal.org. Um, and then the last, um, the last objective here is getting Drupal.org profiles uh, to earn the community role. Um, that just shows a minimum level of engagement. And if we're constantly growing the number of people who have the community role, um, we are, that's the pipeline, right, for that engaged community member who's going to go on to become at some point uh, you know, a, a skilled or expert developer who's contributing back to the project. Um, so that's about growing that funnel of folks who can continue to work on the project. One other strategy that we want to employ in the future, but don't really have capacity for right now, sharing the tribal knowledge of our key leaders. So this is um, really making sure that camp leaders are talking to camp leaders. Um, that folks who are working on, you know, various initiatives within the project, you know, are connected to other people doing similar work. Uh, future objectives, um, creating training opportunities for community leaders. Um, and actually, after I talk to Donna today, we might be able to move that into the current plan. Um, we also, we talked about this in Los Angeles, helping to, helping core maintainers recruit new developers for key topic areas. Um, and also the same thing for camps. And there's some discussion about whether or not that was really needed. So we're going to go back and do some research with the community about how much that's actually needed. Um, like that, that bench building for the project, how useful that'll actually be. Uh, we had a goal about increasing a, a Drupal adoption in target markets. Um, you said define target market, um, and for the moment, we're going to go ahead and say that we're going to focus on enterprise customers, uh, but we're not going to try to use tactics that align with um, the, the business community that's already focused on this, this customer base. So, um, you know, the, the enterprise is, you know, those are the customers that have by, you know, been identified as the thing that's really key to the success of the project. So we felt like that's the best place we can spend our time right now. Um, we have a few different strategies here, um, curating and disseminating vendor agnostic information. Again, aligns with one of our um, key differentiators. Um, working with Drupal shops to get them to uh, build the conditions for more Drupal adoption, and then partnering with ISVs to increase the product value proposition. So, you know, if you uh, are a company that works with specific kinds of marketing software, for example, you know, knowing that you can um, use Drupal with that software helps uh, make that more valuable to you. So a few of the things that we're working on here from an objective point of view, um, getting the wide Drupal uh, section up on the site um, that's focused on evaluators and specifically enterprise evaluators. Um, we will um, be creating Drupal marketing materials, uh, you know, obviously aligned, especially with the with the with the D8 release. Um, we will have worked with 12 ISVs in our Partner Connect program to uh, engage them in the community and make sure that their integrations and, uh, you know, integrations are solid and, and doing good stuff. Um, and we will be looking into this year um, the possibility of doing a co-funded market research study uh, for, for Drupal uh, as well. That's something that would help both in the enterprise um, and it would help in the efficient development of Drupal. So we think that's a, a good thing to pursue if we can if we can um, fund that. Uh, future strategies: um, working with strategic agencies um, to get them to adopt Drupal, um, and then conducting market research uh, to understand the demand and opportunities for Drupal. So we're gonna we have an objective here that will help us understand if that's a strategy we can employ. Uh, and future objectives, um, you know, building a list of tar agencies to target. Um, and then uh, another key piece here is defining personas for those CMS evaluators and decision makers so that we can uh, further hone in the materials that we're preparing. 
And the last bit is uh, focused on the association in particular um, and, and our health overall. So uh, our strategies right now are really just trying to use our current staff and resources to the best we can, of our abilities. Uh, we're focused on improving process and finding efficiencies where we can. Um, and we're using systems and software um, in, you know, in a, in a cost-effective way for us. Um, our two main objectives right now are finding the future, the long-term sustainable funding model for the association. Like, where is our growth? Um, we know that the, the board um, and lots of community members would like to see a step into more roles. Uh, but we can't do that unless we grow. Um, and then we also have a goal of restoring the operating reserve to a monthly minimum of $200,000. And then in the future, you know, we'll be setting objectives to grow that. So the imperative for us in this plan is the strength and resilience section. That's what we've got to be focused on in the short term um, while we, um, you know, go through this next 12 to 18 months. That's what we're all going to be focused on here. Um, and that won't come at the expense of doing other work. Um, and as a mission-based organization, we're always going to try to make sure that the, our financial health is, you know, aligned with our mission uh, for sure. But this is definitely where we're going to need to focus. So the next steps for us right now is just to present this at the all-staff meeting next week. Um, the objectives area um, is the launching pad for the staff to go back and look at the work that they're doing um, in the next 12 to 18 months and figure out how it aligns with those objectives. So where does the DrupalCon team see their role in helping to um, align community resources around the, uh, the, the work that needs to get done in Drupal right now, right? Because um, there's lots of opportunities to do that. Uh, we're putting on a DrupalCon anyway, so we might as well do it with some purpose, right? <laughs> Uh, so, so that's the kind of thing that they're going to be doing uh, starting next week. Um, and then they will set goals that feed into those objectives, um, and those will form their, their team dashboards. Um, so that's what will happen uh, next. Um, then we get to measure stuff. So we're going to update the org dashboard, uh, set the objectives as the KPIs. And for some of these objectives, uh, like there's still blank spots there because it's something we've never measured before. And one of the things that's been really is like tough emotionally is to set a goal for something we've never measured before, uh, only to realize that that was a crazy goal. <laughs> so um, we might spend some time just sort of understanding what the baseline is and you'll get, you know, we won't, we'll, we'll report what the numbers are, but we won't say it's like, you know, it's 20% of goal or anything like that uh, for some time. Um, we'll be doing some baseline setting, but, the, the KPIs um, are going to be those objectives from the strategic plan. And then the team goals that feed into those will also be on our dashboard. So you'll be able to see sort of what's driving those KPIs. And that's going to be the thing that lets us also understand that tactic's working, but that tactic is not, right? So we'll update the org dashboard and the packet as well for the board. Uh, so it'll be oriented around the strategic frame uh, going forward. Um, and I'll be bringing you guys a draft of that. Uh, and I'd like to see us be able to shift over after the September board meeting uh, into a new format. Um, and that'll mean no more operational updates. Um, we're just gonna be focused on those strategic objectives and the work that we're doing that supports those. So I'm gonna stop there. Those are all my words. Great, awesome. Thanks, Holly. Um, so, so I think um, what, I, what you know, I think what is best is that we maybe don't discuss this here in case there is discussion, but that we do allow people to ask some questions if there's questions, uh, clarifying question that Holly can clarify. Uh, if you have concerns about this or ideas on how we can tweak it, improve it, maybe that we should table and either we can talk about it in the next session, the executive session, or we can find some time separately to do it. But I do want to make sure people can ask questions to help them get things clarified. That sounds good. So is there any any questions? What's our uh, operating reserve monthly minimum right now? What are we What are we sitting at? I cannot answer that question. Okay. Uh, Matt's on the call, but um, I'm, uh, Matt's on the call, but I do not know off the top of my head.
Maybe Matt will message me something magical. <laughs> Not enough. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I'm just interested in in how far we have to have to pull that ball down the down the down the field. Gotcha. Well, we do have, um, so, you know, our, our general policy around financials is to review those in executive session. And once they've been approved to um, publish those out to the public, and we do have that on the executive session um, docket. Okay. So we'll be able to see those for sure. I'll, I'll shut up then. Any other questions? No other questions. Um, Okay. Are there, is there any other questions about the meeting in general versus this specific topic? Anything Anything you want to share or say? If not, I think we move to executive session. We can come back to this topic um, if, if you'd like. Um, uh, if not, I, I suggest we do the normal uh, the normal agenda for for the executive session. Thanks. All right. See you guys there. Thanks. All right. Okay. So who actually was not here?